All praise, all glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the heavens and the earth and that which is between them. May his infinite, endless peace and blessings be upon the leader of creation, the jewel of creation, the master of creation. The beloved to Allah, the nearest to Allah, the dearest to Allah. None other than Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Allah Almighty gave different means to different anbiya alayhi salam in order for mankind to be guided towards the direction of God Almighty. Allah Almighty gave the Torah to Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. He gave the Zabur to Sayyiduna Dawood alayhi salam. He gave the Injil to Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam. And then he gave the ultimate book, the final message, the Quran al Karim to Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. He gave suhuf to Ibrahim alayhi salam, meaning he gave scriptures to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam in order for people to know and recognize the direction that is heading towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people were guided subhanallah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the Qur'an is that book that was given to our noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Qur'an itself is mentioned in the Qur'an 70 times. The Qur'an itself is mentioned 70 times in the Qur'an. Allah Almighty talks about the power of the Qur'an. The power of the Qur'an. He says, Lo anzalna hadha al-Qur'an ala jabalilla ra'aytahu if we were, yani Allah Almighty talking about the royal we, the mighty we, if we were to reveal the Quran al Karim on top of the mountain, then surely you would see that mountain shred to pieces out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah Almighty goes on to speak about the protection of the Qur'an al Karim, How the Qur'an is preserved by Allah Almighty and protected by Allah Almighty. He says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. Verily, surely we reveal the Qur'an al Karim, and for it we are the protectors. We reveal the Qur'an, Allah Almighty says, and for the Qur'an, we are the protectors. Like Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam had the Injil, like the Bible. But the Bible was protected solely by Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and the previous scriptures. However, when it comes to the Qur'an, Qur'an is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah Almighty goes on to speak about the truthfulness of the Qur'an al Karim. He says, Alif la meem, thalik al kitab la rayba fi. Alif la meem, thalik al kitabu la rayba fi. This is that book which has no doubt in it. Hudan lil muttaqin. It is a guidance for those who are muttaqin, who are righteous people, subhanallah. Oh. Yani the prerequisite of anybody being guided to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he is somebody who aims to be a righteous man or a righteous woman. Then Allah Almighty goes on to speak about the rhetoric of the Qur'an al-Kareem, the Arabic of the Qur'an al-Kareem, and that nobody can bring a verse at the Qur'an al-Kareem. What does he say? وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّمْ مِثْلِهِ If you all doubt that which we have revealed upon our servant, then bring a verse like the Qur'an al-Kareem. You will not be able to do so. You will not be able to bring a verse like the Qur'an al-Kareem. Allah Almighty speaks about the, the glory of the Qur'an and the truthfulness of the Qur'an in another statement where he says that if all men and women and jinns were to gather and to make something like the Qur'an, they will not be able to do so. They will not be able to do so. It so it happened that in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man, he, because the Arabic language was at his peak at that time, he wrote a, a few verses of Arabic in, in in po uh, poetic form and he went to his foes he went to his friends and he said look at this I've produced something better than the Quran and his foes his friends they mocked him and they joked on him and laughed at him they said we don't believe in the Quran we don't believe in the Quran yet we tell you the rhetoric that is used in the Quran al-Kareem absolutely beautiful 
absolutely beautiful. Subhanallah, the flow of the Quran on another level. So this Quran that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the span of 23 years, when did it start? It started in 610 after uh, the Christian era. 610, Christian era. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the Ghar of Hira. He was in the Ghar of Hira. He was remembering Allah Almighty. He was excluded from the dunya. And the noble lady, our mother, the mother of the believers, Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha, would go to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taking some food to him alayhi salatu wa salam. So when the angel Jibreel alayhi salam, Hadir, he is present before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ikra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord. Khalaqal insana min alak. He created man from blood clot. Ikra wa rabbukal akram. Read and your Lord is the most noble. Allam al insana ma'alam ya'alam. The one who taught man that which he did not know. He taught man that which he did not know. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is shivering. He is shivering because it's a shock. He's in a state of shock when Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. He runs down from Ghar Hira. He opens the doors to his house and he says to Sayyida Khatija radiallahu anha, our mother, Zambiluni, Zambiluni ya Khatija, cover me, cover me, O Khatija. And Sayyida Khatija radiallahu anha covers the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he is shivering. What does she say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? She says, Wallahi, la yukhsik Allahu abadan. By Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. Wallahi, innaka la tasilu raham. By Allah, you are the one that maintains family ties. Wa tastukul hadith and you speak the truth. You never lie. Wa tahmilul kalla wa taksibul ma'dum. And you help the poor and needy. Wa tukri daif. And you entertain your guests. And you guide people towards the right direction. This is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became calm. And when he was saying, Zambiluni, Zambiluni, cover me, O Khatija. Those words were so beloved in the court of Allah Almighty that he gave a full surah by the name of Muzambil. And he said, O oh, you who is covered. Ya ayyuhal Muzambil, kumil layla illa qalila, nisfahu avin kusminhu qalila. O oh, the one who is covered. That Memory of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he came to Khatija radiallahu anha. Stand during the night, stand during, stand during the night, but stand a little. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there were reasons why Allah Almighty was saying that to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salam is now in a serene mode, is in a calm mode. And the Quran gradually is revealed to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. It is revealed to Rasulullah alayhi salam. And Allah Almighty gave him one of the longest surahs in the Quran in the form of Surah Baqarah. He gave him the longest verse within that surah, the verse number 282, in regards to loan and rulings in regards to loan, loaning money, etc. Allah Almighty gave the Prophet السلام, the shortest surah in the form of Surah Qawsar. And then he gave him the shortest verse within the Quran in Surah Qawsar also. Then Allah Almighty gave the Quran a heart. He gave a heart in the form of Surah Yasin. He gave power to the Quran al kareem He gave glory and majesty to the Quran al kareem in the form of Ayatul Kursi. He gave the Quran al kareem some of the seven most beautiful verses in the form of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, ar rahman ar rahim Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqeem. In that form, Ilal Walad Dalin, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, is told by Allah Almighty that this is that surah, which is beautiful surah, which is powerful surah. And he tells the companions that this is that surah, which is revealed once in Mecca and once in Madinah al -Munavvara. My brothers, the issue at hand is this, that we Muslims have drifted away from the Quran al kareem we have drifted away from these powerful yet beautiful verses of the Quran al kareem that take mankind out of darkness and place them into light in times of such turmoil. 
the times that we are experiencing right now as a Muslim Ummah, these are those same verses that take mankind from that state to this state, yani from darkness and they're placed into light these people are. But we are too busy on a book other than the book of Allah Almighty and that book is Facebook. We are too busy trying to recognize ourselves by different means through Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and YouTube and all of these different social media platforms, yet we have forgotten the one that reads the Quran al Karim is somebody who will take beautiful characteristics and you will be somebody who is raised in the dunya and the akhirah, subhanallah. We know one of our shaykh, Shaykh Ahmed Habbal, rahimahullah ta'ala, he passed away in 2008. He used to recite the full khatam of the Quran daily. He, he, was, he was not a scholar. He loved scholars, mashallah. He was known as the Abdal from Sham. He met some of our shiyukh, mashallah ta'ala, some amazing stories which I'm not going to mention this time, but he was somebody who will finish the full khatam of the Qur'an daily. We have people now, I know one brother, he says, if you read Surah Ikhlas three times, you, there's a hadith, you finish the full Qur'an, like you get the reward of full Qur'an. So this man, he would go to different majalis, uh, different khatams, and he would say three Qur'ans from me, four Qur'ans from me, five Qur'ans from me. And one person asked him, I've never seen you reading the Quran. What is it? He said, whilst I was sitting here, I finished the full Quran. He said, how? He said, I recited Surah Ikhlas three times and I got the reward for the full Quran and I gave that to him in the form of reward. He said, Yar, Allah Almighty would have just re revealed Surah Ikhlas if that was the case. He re revealed from Alham to one Nas for us to read and for us to do tadabbur upon the Quran al Karim, for us to reflect upon the Quran al Karim. This is amazing. This is what we need to do. We need to take back the Quran al Karim. This thing that you're reading here in the dunya and that is here in the celestial realm in the heavens, subhanallah. This thing that we, I had one brother, mashallah, he said, I have so many family problems. He could recite the Quran, but he said, I don't choose to read the Quran. Then I said to him, how will you get out of these problems? You go to this man, that man, you pay this money, that money. This, you know, it's like a fix for a short period of time. You are not going to get healed unless you interact with the Quran al Karim. Unless you love the Quran al Karim. Unless you honor the Quran al Karim. We all want to be people who are the best. Our parents want to make us the best in the dunya. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khayrukum man ta'allama al Quran wa allamahu. That the best one of you is he who learns the Quran and then teaches it. The best one of you is the one who learns the Quran. He acquires the knowledge of the Quran. But look, the times that we live in. One brother, mashallah, hafiz of the Quran, alim of the deen. He went to propose to a woman. He went with his wali and the rest of the family. They went there. They said to him, he's a hafiz of the Quran. What is he going to do for us? What, what, what is he going to do for us? Yeah, he's going to take you to Jannah. He's going to take those people to Jannah with him. His family is going to guide him upon Sirat Mustaqim. Tell me which half is of this dunya is poor. Which half is of this dunya is needy. Which half is of this dunya is coming to you with his hands open like this. Wallahi, you will never find those people. Half is of the Quran. He has a Quran in his chest. That same Quran that Allah Almighty is telling you that if we were to reveal it upon the mountain, like imagine Mount Everest, the Quran was to be revealed upon that, Mount Everest would shred to pieces out of the fear of Allah Almighty. Yet this Quran is revealed upon the chest of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then later as transmission is given to the Hufaz who have been chosen by Allah Almighty to memorize the Quran al Karim. Yet these same Hufaz of the Quran al Karim are people who have been belittled in the community. They've been belittled in the community. Oh yeah, we listen to them once a year when we come to pray our Salatul Taravi. Other than that, what need do we have for our Hufaz? Look what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying in a hadith in Sahih Muslim. He said, Ahlul Qur'ani hum ahlullahi wa khasatuhu. We want to be people who are connected to this man. We want to be people connected to that man. Allah Almighty is saying, Ahlul Qur'ani, the people of Qur'an are the people of Allah. And they are the elect of Allah Almighty. They are not just the normal people of Allah Almighty. These are the elect people of Allah Almighty who are connected to the Quran al Karim. Let me mention to you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there are two people sitting together. One man is making dua, the other man is reciting the Quran al Karim. He has hajat, he has hajat. And he has needs, he has needs. 
But the one who is reading the Quran al Kareem, his needs are listened to before the one who is raising his hands to Allah Almighty. Why? Because he's reading the book of Allah Almighty. He is beloved, he's in the beloved circle of Allah Almighty. And subhanallah, how can we not choose to be from those people? How can we yani, leave that room of love and compassion and energy and beautiful kindness, generosity where the Quran is recited and we want to be where songs are listened to. Music is heard daily. This is why I say how many Hufaz, the Qaris, the good Qaris, mashallah, some of them on YouTube, how much views do they get in comparison to some of these singers? I don't mention these singers anymore because you might not know them. Then later you're searching up who so-and-so is and then you're listening to them and I'm the one who's getting the sin for it because you didn't know who Jay-Z was, etc. Yani. So I'm not going to mention their names, but the issue is we have left that circle because we find it boring. We find the Quran boring. Let's be honest. Guy Eaton said that a very long time ago. He said, by default, people find religion boring. And by that basis, the Quran is the form, is that is a pillar of Islam in the form that we connect to Allah Almighty. Yet yeah, we leave that out. We leave the Quran out of our daily wird, daily recitation. We need to go work. We need to do this for our child. We need to do this for our child. We need to do X, Y, Z, yani, but the Quran, nothing. Ask yourselves. Ask yourselves, when's the last time you recited the Quran al Karim? I'm not saying that, mashallah, there'll be people here who recite Surah Yasin today, mashallah, they recited Surah Mulk last night, etc. That's what I'm not saying. There are some people who do that, mashallah, on a daily basis, but there are some people who will open Quran once in Ramadan. The Quran wasn't revealed to the Prophet salam, to say to his Ummah to open it once in Ramadan. No, the Prophet wasallam said, this is a form for you to be guided to Allah Almighty, yani, subhanallah. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, like if I was to say to you people, or it was to be said to me, if you say one word, I will give you 10 pounds. If you say another word, I'll give you another 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, and the list increases. I'll be sitting here for a full day taking bags full of money, home, mashallah, making my family extra happy, and all of that. Yet Allah Almighty is saying, man kara harfan min kitabillah. Whosoever reads a word from the book of Allah Almighty, falahu bihi hasanatun. For him, that is a hasana, for a good deed. Wal hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha. And that hasana that I am saying, it is tenfold. The good deed I am talking about, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, is in tenfold. It is rewarded ten times. La akulu alif lamim harfun. He says, I don't say alif lam is a harf. وَلَكِنْ أَلِفٌ حَرْفٌ وَلَامٌ حَرْفٌ وَمِيمٌ حَرْفٌ I say Alif is a harf. You get 10 Ds for Alif. Lam is a harf. You get 20 Ds. And Meme is a harf. You get 30 Ds. Ask yourselves this, brothers. If you were to say Alif, Lam, Meme, Alif, Lam, Meme, Alif, Lam, Meme, all day long, and you were to be granted a thousand pounds at the end of the night, you would say, brother, I will do more than that. I won't even sleep during the night. Because... I'm getting so much money. Same as salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone who says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once he is rewarded 10 times and 10 deeds are, are given to that person, 10 blessings of Allah Almighty descend upon that person. Yet we want to earn the 10 pounds of this dunya which have no barakah in it. And I'll mention that the point of that barakah is people are hoarding money here. And I tell you in the form that they're hoarding money. Let the money come, let the money come. The night doesn't end. I pray the night doesn't end and the money keeps coming. The money keeps coming. And then the same people, same people, they go to their native country. They'll go to Azad Kashmir. They'll go to Dadial. They'll go to Kotli and Mirpur. And then they will get their, you know, the camels out and they'll get their... Uh, the um, what do you call it? cows and you know dand and stuff and they will oh Chaudhry Saab you know Chaudhry Saab throwing money the way it came the way it's gone the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not allow they didn't allow for us to abuse animals this is that religion which does not abuse animals but the issue is this is the only religion which is abusing animals currently and there are other forms as well I don't want to go into but look at yourselves look at our states look what we are doing. The money that Allah Almighty is giving us in the form of Alif, Lam, Mim, Dhalik, Al Kitab, that will be evident to us on the day of judgment. When those accounts of people will be corrupt, they will be empty, we will come on the day of judgment, the Ummah of Rasulullah, and we will have ample amount of reward. 
We will have ample amount of deeds. We will have ample amount of money of the Akhirah. Not the money of the dunya that is kept here. We need the money of the Akhirah in the form of the Quran al kareem where it will be nafsi nafsi on the day of judgment. Everyone will shout out, Ya Allah, help me. Ya Allah, protect me. Oh, so and so, help me. And no one will help another person. The Quran al kareems fast law, this is the statement of the Quran. But the Quran will come. The Quran will come and it will intercede for the believer. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِقْرَأُوا الْقُرْآنَ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ Recite the Quran. This is a command. Siga fil Amr. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is commanding us, read the Quran, for indeed it shall come as an intercessor on the day of judgment. It will come in the form of intercession on the day of judgment. Or a person, he is reciting Surah Mulk every single night. It will take you maximum two minutes to recite Surah Mulk. Two minutes. You know, if you look at your phone timing at 12 o'clock, your phone tells you how much you've used Facebook, how much you've used Instagram, how much you've used YouTube, etc. Like iPlayer, Netflix and that. How much you've used? 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour, three hours. At the end of the night, it's about seven, eight hours that we've just spent on our phone out of those 24 hours or maybe 12 hours of being awake or 13 hours or something. Those seven hours have gone on heedless acts. Like you going on YouTube or me going on YouTube, how much has that benefited me? But there is a person, he reads Surah Mulk. He reads Surah Mulk every night, two minutes. Yani when he looks at his timing, two minutes every single night, the man's reading Surah Mulk. To the end, that man dies. And when that man dies, that Surah, in the form of a bird, comes to his cover. Comes to his cover. And it protects him. It keeps him company. When there will be full of, the, the cover will be full of darkness. This man only adhered. The Quran is so beautiful. The Sunnah of the Prophet is so beautiful that even if we were to act upon one hadith, we will enter Jannah. I believe that. Even if we were to act upon one hadith, we will enter Jannah. Like this person recited Surah Mulk every day, he's made it. He's got that, you know, the, the darkness of the cover is now illuminated through Surah Mulk, through the recitation of Surah Mulk. Two minutes it took you, my brother. It took you 40 minutes, 50 minutes watching a movie, a short movie or one of these dramas on, on ARY or B4U or one of these, which you actually watch, you don't read the Quran. Have you ever realized that? Whenever you watch one of these movies, you will be diverted from the Quran because the Quran is accepting sinners. And the, like you know the blessings of the Quran. I'm not saying the Quran is there just for the holy moly people. Yeah, I'm so religious. Look at me. I carry the Quran 24-7. I'm not saying that. But you know what the Quran can give you, the illumination that it can give you. Yet you chose to be illuminated in the form of the TV, which has actually caused you darkness. It's not caused you illumination. Your heart is not illuminated. Your heart has actually become hardened due to seeing some of the haram scenes in that movie. Whereas you could have picked up the Quran. Two minutes, two minutes of the Quran every single day. Is that a big ask? Oh, and, yani Ramadan comes and we pick up the Quran. How many of our youngsters are asked about the Quran and they don't know which answers to give in regards to the Quran al Karim because it is, um, it is too difficult for them because they've never read it. They've never interacted with the Quran al Karim. We want to make our parents proud. Someone wants to become a doctor, someone wants to become a lawyer. That's in the dunya, in the form of the Chaudhrys or Rajay or Mirze or whatever form, whatever class your law are from. That's only a handful of people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one that reads the Quran, the one that acts upon the Quran, his parents will be brought on the day of judgment. Imagine all of these people are there on the day of judgment. Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there. Sayyida Fatima salamullah alayha wa alayha salam is there. Sayyiduna Imam Hassan, Sayyiduna Imam Hussein are present there. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu is there. Sayyiduna Uthman ibn Affan is there. Sayyiduna Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is there. All of these companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are present. Your mother and your father are brought forward in front of all of these people and angels put taj on their head. They put crowns on their head. Why? Because their son was reading Quran in the dunya. Yaar, come on man. You telling me... Any other religion, any other way gives you a better way than Islam. Your parents on the day of judgment are given a crown to wear front of everybody. Front of everybody. Subhanallah. That's like their graduation on the day of judgment. Have we been graduated in dunya? That's their graduation. 
on the, in the day on the day of judgment in front of everybody and another narration the prophet sallallahu mentions not only the taj there is also a nurani cloak there's so much nur on that cloak there's so much light upon that crown that's placed upon their head that it is better than the light of the dunya you say like new york never goes to sleep Subhanallah, like Makkah Sharif doesn't go to sleep, Madinah Tul Munawwara never goes to sleep. Those lights I'm talking about, better than those lights. They will be placed upon our parents' head on the Day of Judgment. Then why are we looking at other means, my brothers? We're looking at this dunya. The dunya of life, very, very short. We're living here for a few days. Like one uncle was mentioning outside. He said, you were talking outside, that where has our jawani gone? Where has our life gone? We will say the same, those people in their 30s, 20s, we will look back because now we're carrying a vacuum with us all the time, the phone, in the form of a phone. We're carrying a vacuum with us. That vacuum is sucking the blessing of our time. Isn't it? Like you sit on Facebook and YouTube and all that for seven hours. Where's time gone? You ask yourself at the end of the night, the time's gone. Tomorrow, same routine. The day after, same routine. Why? Because we weren't people of the Quran. Quran hasn't given us a focus. Because we weren't connected to it. Now that we are connected to the Quran, we're reading one verse of the Quran daily. Start slowly. One verse of the Quran. Mem, if you are past that, if you're reciting one Raku, one Jews, start memorizing the Quran. Why? Because on the day of judgment, it will be said to, said to us, the, person, the people who have memorized the Quran, read, recite, and be raised. Right? You will read and you will be raised. Right? With angels, you'll be raised. And where you stop, that will be the place of your Jannah. Tell me who doesn't want to be in Jannatul Firdaus, Ma Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who doesn't want to be in Jannah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? With those companions of the Messenger of Allah who gave their lives for this beautiful religion to pass on Islam, to pass on the Quran al Karim. Subhanallah. Who doesn't want to be from those people? We want to be from those people. We people, and that in this time of turmoil, in this time of darkness, we want to be from those people who hold on firmly to the rope of Allah in the form of the Quran. That is the rope of Allah in the dunya in the form of the Quran. Recite the Quran. Read the Quran. People say to me, sometimes I get a phone call. They say, Imam Sab, recite the Quran. My father's passed away. Your father's passed away. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave my father a long life. He hasn't passed away. And I read the Quran. I read it for my own grandparents. My grandparents have left the dunya. I recite the Quran for them. Hasn't Allah given you a tongue? Hasn't Allah given you a mind? Hasn't Allah made you a Muslim for you not to read the Quran? Subhanallah, don't be from those people like lazy. They've got everything else, they can do everything else, but they can't read the Quran. They just don't want to read the Quran, they just choose not to read the Quran. They don't want to be from those people. And imagine that person who has made one half of the Quran, who has produced one half of the Quran. And imagine those people who have made thousands of Hufas, whose basic system is that that they want to form hufaz, reciters of the Quran al karim in times of darkness. Subhanallah, then this has happened before our eyes. We have seen uh, mashayikh, shayukh, peers, mashallah, who have made madaris so that they can educate people and make them hufaz and ulama of the deen. Allah Almighty, preserve them, protect them, and those who have passed away, raise their ranks in Jannatul Firdaus, mashallah. And this is our form of sadqa jariya in this dunya, that if we can support a hafiz of the Quran al Karim, that if you know in your local, I'm not asking you for money, I don't need your money, I'm asking for, I'm telling you in the form of your sadqa, so that this can be a sadqa jariya for you, you can find out from your local village in Pakistan or wherever you are from, is there anybody studying the Quran? I want to buy him a Quran. If you can't support him fully for a full year, that brother Farah, he bought some Qurans to me. He said, oh, this is Sadqa Jariya for my uh, father. Brother Khalil, he bought Qurans to me. This is Sadqa Jariya for my father. MashaAllah, best investment. I didn't get anything out of that. They, bought, they said, you get the Qurans. One of them said anyway, and we will pay you the money. This is the best thing you can do, my brothers. If you can't read the Quran, then at least make the intention that you're reciting La ilaha illallah because that's in the Quran with the intention that you're reading the Quran and you will be rewarded for that. Wa akulu kawli hadha astaghfirullahi li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad.